Jalen Johnson, right? The value of Jalen Johnson, his max value. Is there a scenario where the Bears let him walk? I, you know, I've been going over this because I know a lot of people are very high on him, especially, you know, close friends of mine that I've talked to uh, are super set on trying to keep this guy. And I get it. And I've kind of remained consistent in my thought process that, you know, he's been very average. Right. And you brought up the fact where you're like, well, you think that because he doesn't get the numbers because he doesn't get the interceptions. And it's it's true. He doesn't. He plays a, a position where you guys pick off the ball a lot and he doesn't do that that much. And, and the, the two picks he had recently were against a backup quarterback and a third string quarterback. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt for what it's worth. And um, when I started kind of thinking about, OK, well, is Jalen Johnson truly worth keeping on this roster? Right. I, I thought about a couple different points. One, you're going to have to overpay him to keep him here. The question is, how much are you willing to overpay him? But on a team like this that's so depleted, that has so much cap room, it doesn't hurt you as much to overpay a player if you have to. Now, if, if you're tight on the cap, that's a different scenario. Then you, you need to sit there and have accurate contracts. But we have a ton of cap space. It won't hurt you that much to just overpay a guy for a couple of years. However, with that being said, you still don't want to drop, you know, get into bad contracts. You definitely don't want multiple bad contracts because that's how you drown yourself as a team. We saw that here with Phil Emery, right? So first thing I did was I said, okay, well, who's potentially going to be available this year, right? As far as free agents go, like if we don't sign Jalen Johnson and we look at the free agent market in the off season, who else can we sign instead? Now, I don't necessarily know what these guys' situations are on their teams and if they're going to be re-signed by their teams or not. But currently right now, we have, you know, I just have a list of seven names here. Mm -hmm. Stefan Gilmore, who's pretty old. But then as far as you know, younger guys go, we have uh, Kendall Fuller, Kenny Moore, uh, Akella Witherspoon, Legereus Sneed, uh, Jerry Jacobs, Miles Bryant, right? Now, I also started looking into previous contracts that other teams have signed their quarterbacks to, right? And a couple names came up. So first one, the guy that seems like he got a little bit overpaid based off his production, which is probably pretty comparable to Jalen Johnson, is a guy that we know very well that's on the Green Bay Packers, uh, Jair Alexander. He was 25 years old when he signed. He got $21 million a year. And at the time when he signed, he had five interceptions total in four years and two forced fumbles. Now, I believe the year after he signed in his fifth year, he had five interceptions in that one year. So, you know, that's that number doubled, but um, but when he did sign for twenty one million a year, he only had five interceptions in his career. A guy like Marshawn Lattimore was twenty five years old when he signed. He signed for nineteen and a half million a year, but he had ten interceptions and he had five forced fumbles. Okay, a guy like Denzel Ward was twenty four when he signed. Um, he had ten interceptions, two forced fumbles. He signed for twenty and a half million a year. Um. A guy like Chavarius Ward who was 26 years old when he signed. He only had four interceptions and one forced fumble, and he did not get re-signed by his team. He wound up getting picked up for another by another team for 13 and a half million a year. Right? So the number for Jalen Johnson's got to be somewhere within there for between 13 and a half to 21 million. You know, if he's asking for anything higher than that, that's insane, in my opinion. I personally think 18 million a year is where it's at. But um, with the guys I mentioned that are going to be available, Witherspoon is 28 years old, has 10 interceptions. He's played 69 games in seven years. Kenny Moore is 28 years old, has 17 interceptions, four forced fumbles, has played 96 games in seven years. Uh, Kendall Fuller, 16 interceptions, has played 111 games in eight years, two forced fumbles. Uh, Miles Bryant is 25 years old, only three interceptions, three forced fumbles. Uh, Jerry Jacobs is 26 years old, only four interceptions, 32 games played in three years. Uh, but the, the shining star, I think, out of this is Legeria Sneed, in my opinion. Um, 26 years old. He's got nine interceptions, four forced fumbles. Regardless, you could get – listen, there's going to be guys out there that are available that 
have made a career out of taking the ball away and getting interceptions and whatnot. Now, I like Jalen Johnson. I'm just not stuck on Jalen Johnson. Uh, what do you What do you think? I'm not stuck on Jalen Johnson either, personally. Um, I think when you write that list down of guys who are available free agents, I think depending on how good the – I think if you had a better situation on your defensive line, I think you could probably let Jalen Johnson go and sign a guy for $4 million less per year and probably have almost identical production, right? Um, but having said that, I think there is um, – I think there's something to be said – especially with the way Ryan Poles has conducted business as of now and not paying his current guys, that is problematic for for teams and players in the league moving forward. The Bears have never really had a reputation of necessarily being a – I'm sorry. The Bears have never really had a reputation necessarily of being a super pro player franchise. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase this other than the like the fact that they're just – they're. Their areas have never been like very uh, family friendly for the players. They, you know, they, they're. I remember there was a story about Olin Krutz having to pay to have his family come to a game, kind of thing. You know, just like little things like that, and how you treat your players does resonate in the league, and that that is a big deal. So the reason I feel like the Bears almost need to pay Jalen Johnson is a for team culture and just showing some sort of commitment to guys who perform in house and that kind of adds like almost like two million dollars per year towards how much you need to overpay him so if jalen johnson is a 16 17 million dollar a year guy to kind of prove a point you should pay him 18 19 um when you compare all those numbers and stuff i also have an issue with a guy like jalen johnson who i would say he's worth in the 16 to 18 million dollar range in comparison to what it goes those guys that you comp- that you listed those are top five corners any way you cut it. And I don't think he's a top five corner, but he has stated that he wants to be paid like a top five corner. And having seen this in other sports, when a guy starts to perform in the contract year, it almost shows that, you know what, those stats were not an aberration. The fact that you never had an interception before you all of a sudden can get three, four interceptions in four weeks, right around contract negotiation time. So what, what are we, why aren't you doing this all the time? So there's something to be said about all these points. The other part of this is he's a solid corner on a bad team that has been here a while, and it shows some loyalty too. He's also 24 years old, which is a great, great age to sign a corner because if even if you sign Kendall Fuller, now you got to sign this guy to three, four years, and he's old. Now he's playing into his old days of the contract. Even if you overpay Jalen Johnson, at least he's ending his career here by 28, 29 and you can kind of live with that. 